So someone sent me this video clip of a tragic car accident that took place yesterday in Texas. Now, the car that was struck, uh, a man was killed. He was a father. His wife and children were also present in the car, and they were severely hurt, but they did survive. Now, here's a video clip of what the man, the drunk driver, actually did once he witnessed the devastation that he caused. And I'll go ahead and talk after the clip. Kill somebody, you, you kill somebody. Stay right there. You stay right there. You see what you did? Now, what we just witnessed, this has everything to do with sin and the reprobate mind. One of the glorious things about being in Christ, being a new creation in Christ, and thus receiving the Holy Spirit, is that we receive the fruits of the Spirit as well. And one of those is self-control rooted in selflessness. Now, when I was lost, I didn't think much about other people. All I cared about was myself. And you may attest to the same thing if you are indeed a Christian. But when God saved me, one of the things that happened was that I began to start looking outward instead of inward. My mindset went from selfish to selfless. That's a large part of what Christianity is. As Christians, we chiefly desire for our God to be glorified. And as we are looking unto Jesus, he points, to us, he points us to our neighbors and he says, love them. Okay. And one of the ways we love our neighbors is by how we conduct ourselves out in public as to not put others' lives in danger. Now, if we are to examine the reprobate mind, and it's essentially a mind that God has turned over to sin, a mind that doesn't even function properly. It's a mind that is self-centered and ruled by sin. Now, this young man that we just saw in the video, when he got drunk and got behind the wheel of his car, his neighbor was the last thing on his mind. And that's a scary thought, because every time you get in your car, if you are a true Christian, you are surrounded by sinners with the same train of thought as this young man in this video. And people wonder why I say that this world is absolutely terrifying. OK, now it's obvious that the drunk driver in this clip was pissy drunk. OK, but when he has the chance to sober up in his jail cell, OK, and he realizes that he just murdered a man and injured three others. It's going to sober him up real quick. Life is about to get very real for this young man. Okay, His life is pretty much over. And I can look at him and tell that he's not built for prison. Now, I've, been, I've never been to prison, but I have been to jail before. But I do have family members that have spent decades behind bars. It's terrible. Okay, Listen, you better think before you act in life. This life is short. James 4.14. Life is a vapor. And you ask the question, why would anyone want to spend their short life behind bars? Well, see, that's the problem. The reprobate mind is always set on the sin, not on the consequence. And that's because there is no reality of God anywhere in their thoughts. Ephesians 4.18, they are darkened in their understanding. And this is speaking of the reprobate mind. Why was it that the Lord continually reminded the nation, remember what I did to Pharaoh in Egypt. Remember what I did in the wilderness. Remember what I did, says the Lord. And why was it that he wanted them to remember those things? It was to sustain a presence of fear in their lives. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you are a fool. You're an absolute fool, okay? And the Lord doesn't want us to fear him because he's just this big, bad bully in the sky. His fear is meant for our good, okay? One of my favorite verses is Proverbs 9.12, to be wise is to be wise for self, okay? If you fear God, that's a wise thing, and that wisdom will benefit your life as well as others. We're probably living in the most anti-intellectual period in the history of the church. Not anti-scientific, not anti-academic, but anti-intellect, anti-mind. The Bible tells us that we are called as Christian people not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed. And the way of that transformation is through the renewing of the mind. We have been made by our Creator to have a direct line from the brain or from the mind to the heart. And so for the scripture, the new mind brings with it always a new heart. But you can't bypass the mind in an attempt to have a renewed heart. And that's what people are trying to do today. I don't want to learn. I don't want to study the Word of God. I want to have a feeling. I want to have an, uh, some kind of mystical experience and let that supplant or replace the hard study of the content of the Word of God. But the Scripture says the way life changes is when the mind changes.